Welcome to The Freak Show. Here are my top 10 moments in American Horror Story, season one through season eight. Please know these are only my opinion, so I recommend you do your cookie breathing if you don't agree with them. And as always, spoiler warning for those of you out there who have not watched any seasons of American Horror Story. Number 10, Shelby Kills Matt, season six. When the sun went down on the return to Roanoke cast and crew, the blood moon came out and shit got real. Starting with the death of Rory, the next couple of days were tense, tight, and the Polk scenes were something straight out of a torture porn flick. I loved the eeriness of Agnes becoming the character of the Butcher, the slow burn of the murders to the cast and crew, but the best part had to be when Shelby killed her husband Matt. After being attacked and nearly killed by Agnes, Shelby healed at a remarkable rate and discovered Matt and our girl Sexy Scathich doing the horizontal mamba in the cellar. It's only when Matt confesses his love for Scathich does Shelby snap and beat him to death with a crowbar. I mean, guys, I guess it's true what they say about those quiet girls. Anyway, it was a straight up shocking moment that had fans and myself talking for days. Number nine, Allie Poisons Ivy, season seven. Though Cult isn't necessarily a favorite season for viewers, the season had various jaw-dropping moments, from the gimp in the attic to the very satisfying murder of Serena on camera. But the moment fans mutually adored was when Allie finally found her backbone and killed Ivy for everything she did to her and their family. You know, granted, divorce would have been the kinder, you know, route to take, but hey, who am I to tell Allie what to do? She served her justice with pasta, wine, and a little unexpected poison. It was a major twist to the storyline and gave fans a newfound respect for Allie. Number eight, shootout at the Freak Show, season four. In the finale of season four, when Dandy Mott is put in his place by the members of his newly owned Freak Show, he takes revenge to a whole new level. The viewer is treated to watching Dandy prepare as if he were to appear on stage. But it's when Paul confronts him do we finally understand the role Dandy truly readied for. One by one, he hunts down and executes almost every member of the freak show, Tate Langdon style. The way Dandy smiles and hums as he kills our beloved freaks shocked and sickened viewers. Only a couple of freaks manage to escape the slaughter but it's a ghastly and unexpected scene that is without a doubt, one of the top scenes of Freak Show. Number seven, Violet's Death Revealed, season one. Season one had some fantastic twists and shocking moments jam-packed in all episodes, but one of my personal favorites was the revelation of Violet's death. Those subtle hints like the fruit flies lingering in the house, Violet's attempt at suicide and her mysterious inability to leave the house all culminated into a shocking twist. Violet actually died when she attempted suicide in an earlier episode. Fans were completely thrown, and though this wasn't the only brilliant twist of the season, it perfectly demonstrated how hard Ryan Murphy and Brad Falchuk came out swinging for this anthology. Number six, Cordelia's Rise as Supreme, season three. Every witch sat on the edge of his or her seat during the Seven Wonders, hoping their favorite would rise as new Supreme. Few expected Cordelia Fox, daughter to the current Supreme, Fiona Good, to have the talent and strength to conquer the test, but conquer she did. After Zoe accidentally dies during the Seven Wonders tests, Cordelia uses her powers to bring her back to life. She's left drained and faints, but when she rises, her health is restored and she stands as the new Supreme of the Coven. Fans were stunned how the seemingly innocent Cordelia came out of nowhere and snatched the title as Supreme, and even more stunned when the season was over. The opening credits for Coven revealed a Supreme on Sarah Paulson's title card, showing all of us the answer to the next Supreme was right in front of our faces the whole season. Number five, Tate revealed as the Rubber Man, season one. In the premiere season, we follow Vivian and Ben Harmon, their broken relationship and their younger daughter, Violet. The night they move into the murder house, Vivian makes love to her husband and is raped by an unknown man wearing a rubber suit, ultimately becoming pregnant with twins. A DNA test confirmed Ben was the father of one of the babies, but no one knew who fathered the other twin. 
The suspects were limited in the old mansion. However, viewers were new to this kind of world from Ryan and Brad, so no one knew exactly what to expect. But I honestly think fans never speculated Tate Langdon, the broken character every young girl and gay boy wanted to heal. The way Ryan and Brad told the story, almost every viewer seemed to sympathize with Tate's tortured soul and stuck by him when it was revealed he died after killing innocent students at his high school. When Tate exposed himself to be the rubber man, fans finally drew a line in the sand with their favorite villain. And hell, even some still think it's okay. Number four, Liz and Tristan's reunion, season five. Liz Taylor and Tristan Duffy were an unexpected match but their scenes together contained brilliant chemistry and energy. So much so that the viewer couldn't help but be enamored with the relationship developing between these two characters. It's a romantic love story between two people. Tristan's with the Countess and unhappy, and Liz is just someone looking for love. They find each other, and they have a safe and passionate love affair, but the Countess won't give up Tristan so easily and kills him right in front of Liz. Liz is left devastated, and since Tristan died in the hotel, Liz desperately tries to contact his spirit to no avail. In the finale of season 5, Liz is dying of cancer and wants to remain as a ghost in the hotel forever. So the ghosts come together to kill her. When the ghost rises out of Liz's body, she's finally reunited with the man she loves, Tristan Duffy. Oh, best scene ever! I mean, I don't know about you, but I ugly cried and I'm proud of it. Number three, the death of Cordelia Good, season eight. Apocalypse is still fresh in our minds as the season only ended last month, though it's still too early to determine how well the season ranked with fans. There are definitely some great moments in season eight that had fans shook. One of those top moments was the death of Cordelia Good. Faced with the decimation of her coven, Cordelia takes one for the team and kills herself so the new Supreme Mallory can rise and go back in time and save them from the Antichrist. It was especially heartbreaking when our Myrtle realized what Cordelia did and screamed her name with agony. Perhaps some fans had an inclination of Cordelia's plans to kill herself, but most were shocked to their core. Number 2. Sister Jude's Death, Season 2 one of the saddest and most beautiful moments from Asylum was the death of Sister Jude. After rescuing Jude from the Asylum, Kit Walker takes her to his home to spend her final days with his family. The ups and downs with Jude, Kit, and the children touched the hearts of everyone watching and gave us a different perspective at one of the season's best villains. But the scene that forced every single fan to cry was when Francis Conroy's character appeared in the finale to kiss Jude, essentially killing her. It was a beautiful end to an iconic character's existence. Number one, Dr. Threatson revealed as Bloody Face, season two. Asylum is overall the fan favorite season, and there's plenty of reasons for this. Various storylines, characters, and mysteries converge at Briarcliff Manor, and one of the best mysteries of season two was who was Bloody Face. Asylum takes place in 1964, and Bloody Face is a serial killer terrorizing the town. Kit Walker is accused of his crimes and taken to Briarcliff Manor to determine his guilt or innocence. Fans immediately picked up on Kit's genuine innocence and kindness leaving us wondering if Kit is truly innocent or a brilliant sociopath. Bloody Face's identity was revealed mid-season to be the seemingly helpful Dr. Oliver Threadson, the psychiatrist assigned to Kit's case. Dr. Threadson was logical, intelligent, and most importantly, a savior to those wrongfully placed in the asylum. Needless to say, this revelation snatched the wig from every single viewer and, in my opinion, is the best scene in American Horror Story history by far. Huge thank you to my patrons whose generosity pays for the prizes I give away. Alicia, Mia, and baby Jalen George, No Tell Hotel, Michael Mullins Wright, Irish Melly, Jeremy Oren, Vic and Stark, Kenny Joseph, Joseph Anthony, Rhiannon Gilrith, Don Ford, X Misa, Jill Post, Sue Mayone, Cody Begg, Michael Good, Maureen Healy, Shay Sultan, Ray Myers, Leah Bashford, Rez Ramirez, Cody Spencer, 
Mike Gedney, and Debbie Ebby Babebi. To become a patron and earn tons of rewards for just a buck, click on the link in the description. Now, what are your favorite American Horror Story moments? Let me know in the comments. If you'd like to support the channel, leave a like or a dislike. Next week, I'll complete my three-month YouTube jail sentence, so you know what that means. Weekly Wednesday live streams will resume on my channel. More American Horror Story videos and news are on the way. Thank you so much for watching, and beware of the tearjerker watching Sexy Scavage. Beware of Sexy Scavage. Wednesday, September 12th on FX. Do your cookie breathing. Do your cookie breathing. I can't do my cookie breathing.